Hey guys, it's time from the Collection GX Review. I'm Andrew and I'm going to fly Highway to the Danger Zone with Yamato's 160th scale VF0S. Now in the story, the VF0S is the predecessor to the VF1 and rather than running on magical science fiction engines, it uses regular jet engines. And what does that mean to you? Well, the uh, VF0 just has a couple of um, differences in the way it's stylized. It's got these large fuel tanks running on the back and on the bottom, one thing I like is it has these nice big turbochargers, sort of like old World War II planes. And um, as you can see, it rests on three die-cast landing gear. And much like every single Yamato Macros toy, these things are just a pain in the neck to get them to go back in and to get them to come out in the first place. It uh, features the standard bells and whistles for Yamato Macros toys, including underwing stores, uh, the wings move back and forth. Um, this one actually features a opening air brake on the top. The cockpit opens up with a tiny rubbery Roy Foker on the inside. Also, the seat can be pushed back about 20 degrees. Uh, on my toy, this is really, really tight, so unfortunately I can't show you on camera without really wrestling it. And uh, you get the Roy to make sure he stays in there right and uh, also has a an arrestor hook just like real life navy fighters and as you can see it's about a little over a foot long from end to end in fighter mode and uh, as you can see it's pretty well put together you know nothing's really flopping around on it uh, one of the things I just want to go over is um, right now on mine I attached the dorsal fuel tanks that are used to attach the QO 2200 Ghost. Normally it has a set that don't have any um, slots in them for the Ghost. Although, well, the way these things attach is you just put these two pegs right into the body themselves. And initially, when I got this thing, I actually disassembled it just to get these things out because they were really, really tight in there. And uh, afterwards I just sanded down the pegs so that I could push them in and pull them out a little more easily. Uh, also, another thing I just want to show is the fast packs. These are the leg fast packs. And they are more or less the prototype to what you see in the VF1. And the way these work is they just have a small magnet on the back. And what you do is you just let them slide right on there. So it's a nice little trick. I like that because it uh, eliminates the need for any kind of pegs or anything. and I just like the way it snaps on like that. And also, it comes with a stand adapter. Uh, this thing is actually quite horrifying because it's really large and they even felt the need to make it out of two parts and hold it together with two Phillips screws. Now, in theory, this is supposed to sort of hook under here around where there are some screw holes in the bottom of the intakes and you just stick this on your Yamato stand or the Mighty Block stand. Uh, I only have the Mighty Block stand which is not secure enough to hold the VF0 because it's a bit too big for that. And also I think this stand piece is really really terrible looking and I, I just want to leave it in the box. Other than that, it's a pretty nice toy and um, for the curious Here's how the VF0 compares with the VF1. I'm just going to sit them right on top there. As you can see, the VF1 is a much smaller toy, a much smaller airplane as well. And um, if you were to compare these two real life fighters, this would be about the size of an F16 and this is about the size of an F14. So it's kind of interesting just to see you know, how everything got better when they made the VF1 in the story and how everything in the VF0 is just bigger, chunkier, and bulkier. And uh, so yeah, that's the VF1, uh, the VF0 in fighter mode. In the next video, I'm going to show you the QF2200 Ghost, and also how it attaches to the VF0. So here is the QF2200 Ghost fighter. In the story, the Ghost is an unmanned fighter which is designed to assist the VF0 in combat. And uh, as a toy, it's a pretty basic little um, airplane. I mean, it's all plastic. It has um, a very minimal tampoo printing, notably a UN Spacey logo right here, and then just the kite right there. 
Um, the landing gear is die cast and it also features a movable exhaust port for some thrust vectoring action. And uh, actually, actually it's kind of laughably simple considering the fact that this thing was sold by itself for close to $30. Um, the only thing you can really do with it is you can take off this eyepiece and then just put on this little strip down piece on the back just to prepare it for mounting on the uh, VF0. You gotta seat that in there properly. Alright, so we do have the Ghost Fighter and we want to get this thing to go on top of the VF0. So we're just gonna set that aside. We're gonna grab the VF0. And we just have to prep the Ghost Fighter. So what we're gonna do is put the gliding gear in. Now these main wheels are an absolute pain in the neck to get them back out once you put them in. Just because of the way they move down and then just sort of collapse right in there. And so if you're trying to get them out again, you just kind of have to like wiggle them very, very carefully like that to pull them out again. But also it helps if you haven't just clipped your fingernails like I have. But uh, the main wheel is pretty easy to put in and out. And then we just move these little canards up. And then we just have a pair of mounting brackets. And we insert them into these holes right here. Just like that. And you have the mounting brackets canned outwards. And now what we do is we just put the edges of the canards underneath the special dorsal fuel tanks. Also while lining up this uh, slot here with the end of the tail fins on the V of zero. And then we just top it off by putting a, another pair of micro missile launchers into the top of the fuel tanks. And that's, you know, yeah, make sure stuff doesn't fall off. I mean, everything's falling off today. And there we go. VF0 with the Q0200 Ghost mounted in fighter mode. And this is really, I think, the highlight of this set is just putting these two things together for the fighter mode. I think it looks really impressive once you get it all together, especially I'm um, just going to rotate it around a bit. See, very nice. Everything sits pretty well. Uh, the Kyo 2200 isn't going to fall off. I mean, it's not terribly secure in the back particularly, but as you see, if I like roll the thing upside down, it's not really going to fall. It might come a little unseated from the back here. And from the rear, it just looks really cool because you have this nice brass detail on the inside of the engines. And so you can just kind of pull out the uh, VF0's legs and then you can do something with the nozzle here, get some thrust vectoring action going on. Yeah, so this is, I think, one of the big reasons why you buy the deluxe set. It's just to get something look that looks so awesome like this. Alright, so for the next part of this video, we're going to go into gearwalk mode. Okay, so we're going to make the magic happen and transform to gearwalk mode. Alright, so this is actually very, very similar to um, Yamato's 148 scale VF1 toy. Uh, one of the first things we're going to do is just pull up the left tail fin a little bit. And we just kind of have to wiggle the right one underneath the left one. And then you just make sure you get it all the way down. And then just kind of snap that back down there. And we're going to put the landing gear away. And like most of the uh, Yamato Macross Toys landing gear, very easy to put it away. Very difficult to actually take it out again. As you see, it just usually goes right into its hole, although sometimes the um, the pins that hold the tires in aren't pushed in all the way and that tends to hang up on the landing gear doors. So I'm just going to put that, make sure we get that in there. There it goes. Snap it all down. 
And so what we do is we're just going to pull the leg up like this, disengage the lock. Again, just like the 148 scale, there's just a tiny um, peg here that locks into the back of the leg. And then just to do it for the other side as well. And uh, the next part, it's a little trickier on the VF0. Uh, I'm just going to separate the arms a little bit so I can take the gun pot out. Pull that aside. So what we want to do is we just want to pull the arms kind of out. They just rest below the, um, the swing bar here. And then they're just going to come out and do a 180. And pull forward. As you can tell, this is again very similar to the uh, 148 scale VF1 toy and the new 160 scale VF1 toy. Although um, on this toy, they they just get kind of caught like right here, right where the swing bar is. Even though there's kind of a slight indentation on the swing bar to allow them to pass through, but eh, you just kind of have to wiggle it and hope it works. Yeah, I'm hoping a brain right now. There we go. So, here we go, and we're just going to bring the feet out. See nice cookie detented, detented joints. Bring the feet out. Alright, let's make sure everything's snapped in position here. And last thing we got to do is the backpack. So, this is just a standard little double jointed affair on the back. Make sure it works. Okay, and uh, bring the the hands out, get them ready to clasp the gun pod. And um, another thing you want to do is just kind of pull, let the, uh, the uh, shoulders right here just kind of swing freely so you can get enough room for the wings and the shoulders in your walk mode. There we go. And one last thing, I'm just going to pull out this other, other hand there. One last thing is that to deploy the thrusters in gearwalk mode, you just have to pull up the arrestor hook on the back, and there's a little slider here. You just push that down, get it all the way, and you've got the little thrusters on the back. So here we go. In the next video, I'm just going to go over the features of gearwalk mode. So here we have the VF0 in Garwalk mode, and as you can see, it's uh, pretty standard looking as far as Macross toys go. Um, it is nice and stable. See, it's not really going to fall over as long as you just position it the right way. Uh, much like the 148 scale and the new 160 scale VF1s, it features a swivel joint right in the thigh and uh, nice detented feet so that it's not, as you can see, it's not really going to topple forward or backwards. Uh, standard posability in the the arms. Um, the hands are again like the those darn hands from the 148 scale VF1, which are tiny, kind of crappy looking. Although they do hold the gun pod pretty well, even though there's not any kind of peg here to keep it secure to the hand. And I just think that just is the uh, factor of the gun pod design itself. It just it's made to fit this hand very well. Um, one of the things you just want to be aware of is that you kind of have to move these uh, shoulder pads out of the way and position the wings so you can get a good range of motion out of the arms. And uh, there's not really much else to say about this mode. Again, you can move the, the head turn around. It looks pretty nice like that. And it does come with a small stand piece for Yamato's Macro stand and the new Mighty Block stand. And what you do with this is you just... Um, with this flat part facing towards the nose, you just hook this right underneath where the, uh, the swing bar snaps in right here, and you just hook that in there. And just gotta snap it in, and it'll hold the robot. Unfortunately, I don't actually have a macro stand, I have a mighty block stand. And uh, despite what they show you on their website, this stand here, the mighty block stand, is not big enough to really do anything with the VF0 in um, Garwalk mode. In fact, it's about as tall as this thing is, so you're not getting a whole lot of ground clearance if you use the Mighty Block stand.
But uh, yeah, this is Gearlock mode, and next I'm going to show you how to transform it into Vasteroid mode. So we have our VF0 in Gearwalk mode, and we want to put it in Batteroid mode, so let's make the magic happen. First thing I'm going to do is there's a small antenna on the edge of the um, VF0's nose. This thing just plugs into a screw hole right here. Uh, you can supposedly leave it on during the transformation, but I'm just going to take it off just to make it easier. I'm going to take his gun pot off. And, okay, so the first thing we do, again, very, very similar to the 148 scale VF1 toy, is we're just going to unlock the swing bar from these little clamps right in here. So it just snaps out. And you're left with this whole mechanism just kind of flapping in the breeze like that. I'm just going to take the time to uh, straighten these out. Let's just get rid of the fastbacks while we're at it. Straighten this part out. And you don't want to snap this in yet. That comes when you bring the whole mechanism down. Okay, so what we're going to do now is just move the head up out of the way. And we're just going to bring up these panels here. And just, while we're back here, we can just kind of push this whole mechanism here in the back outwards a bit. And we are going to next just kind of unlock the nose cone section from the shield and uh, it's not coming up, there it goes and as you can see this is where it becomes sort of a mess it's just a lot of flapping parts uh, it's kind of just a fact of the design it doesn't really stay together quite as well as the new 160th scale VF1 does okay so I'm just gonna also do this little door on the bottom here and what we do is we take the nose cone and we're just going to push it back it retracts and uh, also try to get the arms out of the way there I'm going to bring the whole head up and through Oop. just going to get that head up and through first before we retract the, the nose cone alright, like that again, yeah, bit of a mess Actually, I think you want to go this way. Alright. There we go. Alright. And we're left with a partially completed batteroid. And how we lock the swing bar into the back is just going through this door here. Pull it out as far as you can, and just sort of wiggle like the end of this joint here into the little indentation here, and we're just gonna get that right in there. Snaps right in, okay. And then there is just a small clamp in the back. Just put the backpack up. 
a small kind of clamp right here in the back and we're just going to snap that down to secure everything and we're just going to bring down one wing and bring down this wing as you can see with the VF0 you put the right wing over the left wing because they're just slightly wider than the VF1's wings are so yeah here we are this is Batroid mode uh, looking a little silly before I position it and here we go and the next part of this video I'm just gonna go over Batroid mode So here we have the VF0 in Metroid mode. As you can see, it's very similar to the VF1. It's just kind of a basic airplane folded in half. And uh, just to go over some of the features of this mode, you have um, moving head lasers, of course. There's a nice little clear detail for the eye. It's very easy to see under any lighting conditions. Uh, you have a clear red jewel on the top of the head. Um, you have ball-jointed shoulders and uh, as you can see these actually these shoulder pads here they're a little loose on mine but they're just secured by uh, two Phillips screws so if you want you could probably tighten them up shouldn't be too much of an issue um, the elbows feature detented joints and they are really really tight on mine I'm not sure if this is common to this particular issue of the VF0 but it, as you can see you kind of have to grasp it like right at the bicep to move them uh, the biceps do rotate to full 360 and you have other joints similar to the um, 148 scale and the new 168 scale VF1 is that battery the uh, gear walk mode joint right there you can get your knees about a little less than 90 degrees and of course the uh, moving knee pads right here and the rotating leg joint right there so uh, overall it's a pretty standard Yamato Macross toy. Um, I have heard there have been problems with the shoulders breaking. Uh, as far as I know the set that comes with the Ghost, that's this one, does have, it has all the fixes, the shoulders will not break out of the box and this is basically the perfect VF0 you can get if you're looking to get one. And also you can see uh, still holds his gun prod pretty well in this mode. A little floppy, but stays in there. Alright, so for the next part, we're going to dress this guy up completely with the Ghost Fighter, and I'll see you in a bit. So here we are at the end of the review. We're all dressed up with nowhere to go. This is the VF Zero, completely decked out. You've got the Kyo 2200 Ghost on the back. You've got all the underwing stores attached. You've got the fast packs on the legs, and it just looks bad ass. Let me just uh, pull this guy a little closer here. So he just looks just really really impressive with just all the armament fully fully equipped. We've got again the underwing mis missiles and the fuel tank. We got the gun pod here. We got the missiles on the back. The, the ghost fighter is all strapped to the back here. And I if you're going to get any VF0 toy, you just have to get the full set because this, this is it. This is the ultimate set you can get. Uh, then again, you know, until they actually make the armored set, which I hope is coming soon. You should work on that, Yamato. And just for the curious, here is Mr. VF0 with Mr. VF1. So you can see just sort of how these two designs are related here. You've got the uh, VF-1 with its flash packs here, um, the boosters on the back, which is sort of the same idea they were going with with the uh, the ghost on the back of the VF-0. And um, actually you can also see a little bit how this design, at least the toy, very much led from the uh, 148 scale VF-1 to the version 2 uh, 160 scale VF-1. They just have a lot of the uh, similar mechanisms here, the extending feet, um, just the way the the shoulders move in and out here. Uh, the detail's a lot better than the 148 scale VF1 on this toy. Much closer to this guy, although the panel lines are still a little bit thicker. 
But uh, yeah, this is this is really nice when you get both of these guys together. And I'm very glad that I own this one. Definitely, even if they never made the uh, version 2 VF1, I'm still very glad that I got the 160th scale VF0 set. But yeah, yeah, you really got to get the full the full set. Only problem with it when it's all decked out like this. Um, I don't know if you've not if you noticed or not, but I can't really move it a whole lot because with the wings out you can't really move the arms around. Also it doesn't actually have a stand adapter piece for bachelorette mode. So you're kind of just stuck with it standing there looking nice and pretty. But uh, then again if you can angle it I'm sure you can get a nice action pose out of it. So uh, this has been Andrew for Collection DX saying fly the skies with a VF0.